All right, you guys, today I thought I'd read quickly from uh, The Golden Cord, or you will find it online also called The Golden Thread. Good luck finding a cheaper version of this. Uh, the one on Amazon that I saw cost $4,000. I think I paid a little under 200 for this. And it said, of course, it's called The Golden Cord, but the one that is really, really expensive is called The Golden Thread, and that cost $4,000. Either way, I couldn't find really cheap versions of these books at all uh it's called the golden cord esoteric hitlerism it's all about well the hitler and his esoteric beliefs uh about a lot of really cool stuff there's a lot of really 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 interesting stuff in here said uh, especially about the jews about the hebrews about the israelites he talks about the jews of malabar uh i've read some stuff on on some videos on here about the jews from malabar uh how, and just a lot of other stuff. But one of the first things I wanted to actually read about and just explain today is some something on the topic of inner earth, of hollow earth, about uh, Admiral Bird here. And uh, I've had this, we've known about this. If you're a Hebrew, if you're anybody that's into the knowledge or into anything or call yourself awakened in anything, you should have known about this subject for a long time now. Hollow earth, inner earth flat earth you should have already went down this rabbit hole it doesn't matter if you came to a conclusion or not you should have at least gone down it don't be scared to go down it because it leads you into so many things a lot of people actually start their journey out of this matrix through flat earth hollow earth and questioning that the real reality of where they come uh, what they're on and what they're around you remember what they say if lucifer can trick you into believing you're on a spinning ball going a billion miles per hour through the vacuum of space with no protection, nobody looking out for you, nothing, then he can kind of slip anything into your uh, coffee, slip anything into your proverbial cereal, so to say, meaning he can slip any type of theology or practice into your beliefs and your worldview and you will accept it and eat it up. But either way, uh, I wanted to read about Admiral Richard Byrd. Uh, if you didn't know, he discovered a continent outside of a uh, something past antarctica something past our in the north pole or uh, the north pole now like i said for years i've i've had info on this especially more towards last year like a year and a half ago i kind of dove back into it shout out big judah he went on to uh, kind of a a little splurge with it and i kind of went with him like oh yeah i forgot i uh, i used to be really into this stuff that's how i kind of got into this knowledge and i went back into it and i found a lot on richard bird i found a lot on inner earth hollow earth what they say about it but i just want to read about this guy if you didn't know about it uh, uh admiral richard bird if you don't know much about him look him up and if you don't know uh sit in tight because i'm about to read you about read you some things about him admiral richard bird page 34 the golden cord esoteric hitlerism Military and civilian flights across the poles do not see the openings because they think this is a geographical location and not some uh, ghostly opening within a certain circumference. They hardly touch the outer border of its opening before they go off into a different direction. Admiral Byrd did find the opening. Admiral Byrd flew, uh, flew 1,700 miles into the interior of the earth in 1947 entering through the North Pole. Admiral Burr saw, uh, Bird saw land, sea, continents, and vegetation. He couldn't wait to go back and once again see such a paradise. Dr. Raymond Bernard revealed Admiral Bird's secret. A friend of Bird and a friend of, to me, under very, uh, very special circumstances. It was Admiral Bird's expedition which inspired me to go to Antarctica. On December 2nd, 1946, Admiral Byrd sailed towards Antarctica with an armada ready, prepared for a major war. Now, that's been talked about when you talk about Admiral Byrd uh, and his expedition to the North Pole to uh, Hollow Earth or to whatever this land that he found up there was. Remember, the Nor we're going to get to the treaty that all these nations have about Antarctica, about the North Pole. And now you ain't you ain't going up there. You're not going up there. Let's just say that. And the whole world fights over everything, fights over all resources, but they all come together to talk, to tell you that you can't go to North, the North Pole. But uh, something that has always been said by many other people is, is he wasn't going there 
to just explore. He wasn't just going there because he was aimlessly looking around, like they say with Christopher Columbus. So Christopher Columbus was just looking for spices and looking for another land, the India, uh, India and stuff like that, the Indies. Uh, India was already well known. Like, it, oh my man, these people, their lies, bro. Let me not get into Christopher Columbus, but it's the same type of lie. They said he was just looking. He was just some great explorer that just happened to come across this. No. He knew where he was going. He knew exactly what he was looking for. And he knew he had a good chance of finding it. And he found it. And he was going there prepared. On December tw uh, 2nd, 1946, Admiral Byrd sailed towards Antarctica with an armada ready, prepared for a major war. The ships were Mount Olympus, Ka uh, Capitana, Pine Island, the destroyers Bronson and Henderson, the ice cutter North Wind, the aircraft carrier Philippine Sea, the submarine Senate, fuel ships Capcun and uh, uh, Capcun and Canisted, the cargo ships Yankee and look at all these ships he was going down there with. He was definitely going ready to fight somebody, knowing he was going to find something. There was also another aircraft carrier named Kuratuk. The armed forces from other nations were all arriving at Antarctica at the same time. So it wasn't just Admiral Byrd. It was other nations going there. Now you know why all of these other nations at the same time agree with all these other nations saying, don't go to Antarctica. Don't go to the North Pole. Don't go to these spots up here. No doubt this was a military operation and not an expedition. Who was the enemy? Admiral Burr stated that the pole stood between them and, uh, and the enemy. He made that statement on the 7th of June, 1947 in Santiago de Chile. It looked like the Normandy invasion all over again. Admiral Byrd apparently dropped a bomb into the opening of the South Pole because it was like throwing a rock into a beehive. Suddenly his planes were missing, ships froze, men perished and died. It must have been a ca uh, ca uh, catastrophe he went limping back to the united states we only later heard of his expedition inside the north pole then there was complete silence then came his sudden death ever since 1947 there has been a close watch on the antarctic continent of some 14 million square miles it is here we should ask admiral Don uh donitz donitz who was a secretary of state under Hitler before his escape and disappearance, was tortured and forced to, reveal Hitler, uh, forced to reveal Hitler's hiding place. The Allies never believed that Hitler died at the end of the war. Admiral Byrd was definitely after some someone in Ant the Antarctic. Uh, so they're saying that Admiral Byrd found Hitler up there. Are the Germans, the Nazis, the Thule Society... The Black Sun Society, all Hitler's cronies and all Hitler's, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, occults and, and followers, some of them escaped to the North Pole. Some of them escaped to this land beyond the poles, which doesn't make much sense hearing from other stories that you hear straight out of this guy's mouth. It seems like the people dwelling beneath the surface do not like the people on the surface. And when I say people, I'm saying it loosely because there's many different races of men up here. And I find it hard to believe that they all see us as the same. You're telling me that some races of men destroy the planet more than others? That maybe they knew and they were ready because they knew a certain race of men were attempting to get in to the inner earth? Remember, there's also stories of the Hebrews of lost tri uh, from the lost tribes going down under earth as well going down to these uh different lands whether it be the land past the poles or the lands inside the earth who knows this guy makes it seem like they're all connected are they're all different hot spots essentially there's a world underneath us okay so let's keep on getting back to this we'll get more into i don't want to make this video too long but i'll kind of expound onto it later i'll see if i can keep this video under 30 minutes okay the you uh he went back limping to the United States. Let's see where I was here. Okay. Secretary of State under Hitler before his escape and disappearance was tortured and forced to reveal Hitler's hiding place. The Allies never believed that Hitler died at the end of the war. Admiral Byrd was definitely after someone in the Arctic, uh, Antarctic. I also went to the Antarctic at the end of 1947 and the beginning of 1948, but I lacked 
the proper technical equipment to get to the opening or to the warm waters that are talked about so much. I did not receive ample input from my sidekick and auric antennas. So in many cases, I guarantee you whenever somebody's going to look for something or somebody, they always have spiritual. I wouldn't be surprised if Christopher Columbus, just like he brought Hebrew translators on his ship, that if he brought um, sidekicks and if he brought people with uh, spiritual abilities and uh, telepathic abilities with him as well, these people exist. It was the book, The Morning of the Magicians by Jacques Berger, or Berger, which was the first book to inform on the masses that Hitler's administration was interested in the hollow earth. Jacques, a Jew who belonged to the intelligence service of the Allies during Nuremberg trials, found out about Hitler through the interrogations of SS men. It's, why would the SS escape to South America and hide in all these other nations, all these high-level SS and uh, Nazis hide in the Americas and hide on the, all these other lands when they could have just gone to inner earth where the rest of Hitler's pals were. doesn't make much sense. Unless there's portals or unless there's openings to uh, hollow earth and Chile and in all these other South American countries that they're trying to escape to. Something to think about. The SS made the first experiments in radar in the Northern Sea. And with this radar, they found the paradise for our Fjörher. Okay. Very important statements were made by Rain Palmer, uh, editor of the North American magazine. Uh, this goes into Flying Saucer, something else I think I should read. Let's just finish it off with this because it kind of connects it to And I'm going to jump back to a page before this and read on something interesting also about uh, Antarctica and uh, Inner Earth because all these are connected. Uh, Flying Saucers, the Arctic, uh, Antarctica, all these are kind of connected. And maybe I'll jump over here to read about the atomic bomb as well. And about how the Americans uh, actually stole the atomic bomb from Hitler. Very important statements were made by, uh, let's see, page 36, Flying Saucers. The Flying Saucers. The very important statements were made by Ray Palmer, editor of the North American magazine Flying Saucers. In an article published 1959, he claimed that flying saucers come from Earth. That's something we heard as well, that they come from Earth. And... In a book right here I reference, uh, Flying Saucers and UFOs, an occult viewpoint by Dr. Doriel. I've read some stuff by Dr. Doriel before in this channel. That book, the cheapest one I can find, cost $500. Another one cost $900. Those are the only two copies I can find. You have to be part of the church to get, or uh, part of the, um, I'm not even going to get into that. I really want this book. That's all I got to say. I really, 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 really want this point uh, book, Flying Saucers and UFOs, an occult viewpoint by Dr. Doriel, because it expounds further on this, too. Uh, let's see that flying saucers uh, come from Earth. He challenged that uh, what was top secret. Uh, he challenged what was top secret. He claimed that flying saucers do not come from other worlds, but come from a country from the surface of this Earth. According to Ray Palmer, the flying saucers come from within the Earth, and they began to appear in 1945 at the close of the Second World War. Is this a so-called coincidence? They appeared as a warning to all countries to stop the use of atomic weapons. Remember, this is not the white man's Earth to destroy. He is always talking about how he can drop a bomb on this country, or they can drop a bomb. There's threat of nuclear war. Uh, this is not your planet. This is not your earth. This is Adam's earth. This is the children of Israel's earth. Who are you to destroy it? Where is it in Bible prophecy that it states that the Caucasian will destroy the earth with an atomic bomb in a fit of rage? Nowhere. So therefore, it's not going to happen. Uh, let's see. Uh, they appeared as a warning to all countries to stop the use of atomic weapons. This is not their earth. The highly evolved civilizations from within the earth that we just read about will not permit an atomic contamination of our planet. The national blackouts of electricity that occur all across the globe without reason are warnings caused by these civilizations that they mean exactly what they say. Interesting. Palmer agrees with the agreement uh, with the arguments of Reed which is another person uh, we got to read about. I have lots and lots and lots of info on Mr. Reed here and Gardner about the hollow earth theory. 
After this article was printed, the magazine was never seen again, according to Raymond Bernard. Palmer's ideas were approved and defended by another American authority on flying saucers, Gary Barker, in his saucer bulletin on January 15, 1960. According to Palmer, the governments are well aware that UFOs do not come from other worlds, but this is kept secret from the public. The flying saucers appear in great numbers after 1945 with the greatest concentration in the Antarctic. Isn't it curious that the whole world came to an agreement? Now get this. This is what I wanted to talk about the treaty. Uh, isn't it curious that the whole world came to an agreement in 1959, the year of geophysics, to place Antarctica off limits to atomic testing? While I, as a ch was, uh, while I, was the Chile uh, Chilean ambassador to India. The Indian representation of the United Nations rejected twice a proposal to make Antarctica an international territory. I feel I had a part in this. In the summer of 1976, a new expedition was organized to explore Antarctica by 10 nations called the Ross Ice Shell Project. Uh, we also heard of things called the... Um, what's it called? Uh, I forgot what it's called uh, down in Antarctica they did another one with atomic testing where they're essentially shooting uh nuclear weapons at the oh, uh, operation fishbowl where they're shooting atomic uh weapons at the firmament seeing if they can break out what they intended to do was drill down under the ice for a quarter of a mile into the sea of ross to see if they can find any uh, find a continent or if there was just water projected uh the project was suspended not long after it started all they said was that they would restart the project at some future date. No nothing works in the Antarctic. Space satellites don't work while passing over the Antarctic. Neither do NASA flight missions except for the space photographing of the openings at each, uh, at each end of the Earth. This they do have. Okay, uh, let's see. Now, here he goes into more stuff. He says there's an opening by Santa Catarina... All right, uh, let's see. This goes into more of the flying saucers. Let me jump over here and I want to read this on uh, just about the atomic bomb. Some say Hitler had the atomic bomb during the Second World War, but he never used it. Yeah, there's so much surrounding Hitler that's a mystery that we need to figure out. Skorzeny tells that he did not want to use it. Perhaps the guides of the underground world, the Hyperboreans, of Agartha and Shambhala had not allowed him to do so. Remember, Hitler was to be so, uh, so to say, or apparently Hitler was in talks with some of these people inside ancient underground cities and other people from uh, that had access to inner earth. And he wasn't as evil and as wicked as people want to say he was. He was trying to bring the world and trying to bring his people, so, quote unquote, his people into an age of enlightenment and the rest of the world was not going to allow that. You are not going to bring out technology that we don't want them to have. You're not going to bring out access to the inner earth. You're not going to talk about the true history of the world. We are going to keep them in darkness. And that's so does, that's a so-called theory on what Hitler's true purpose was and what he was really trying to do. Remember, like I said, there's so much surrounding Hitler that's a mystery. And we're just told that he's just some awful guy. We need to do our own research. And I, I, I guess we'll see. We'll see sooner or later. We'll see what happened. We'll see uh, who he really was. Uh, the world, the Hyperboreans of Agartha and Shambhala had not allowed him to do so. Interesting, because I had another uh, article on Shambhala and Lagartha and Agartha that talked about how no Caucasian was even allowed in the area up until a very, very, very recent point. <laughs> so them allowing Hitler in there, uh, that's kind of weird. Probably the atomic bomb, the North... Uh, Probably the atomic bomb the North Americans dropped in Hiroshima was Hitler's bomb that they had stolen from him. So this, like I said, this book has so many interesting things in it. Uh, we go back over here and it talks about the inner earth and stuff like that, the hollow earth. And it talks about, again, this is what they're saying about the, uh, the people under, underneath the surface are saying about the people on the surface. They are uh, a song which the Eskimos sing, the Eskimos who hang out closest to the hole in the top of the earth sing, great and terrible are those men of the interior. 
and the mammoths sometimes lose their way and are found frozen outside. It is there in the rivers of the inner earth that the freshwater icebergs orig originate from. And I have articles on that as well when we get into inner and central, uh, inner and hollow earth. There's so much, oh my goodness. We can go into the Aurora Borealis. They say that a lot of animals actually uh, have channels that they can come out of. As you just read here, woolly mammoths find their way too far and they stray too far in, um, in hollow earth and they leave and they get frozen in Antarctica. You find uh, fresh icebergs up there and there's more proof of the firmament when you get closer to the top, the center of the earth, the hole that's at the top and the bottom. You can see the firmament more up there as well, according to some theories. And I've read some other stuff. I'm not sure if it's exactly up in the Arctic Circle, but it's near the Arctic Circle. They said there's a um, jump over here. There's a secret city. And if you want to read about that, go into uh, The Seven Secret Cities by Dr. Doriel. And it talks about one uh, in the frozen, very near the Arctic Circle, up in the northern regions of Canada. So with that being said, uh, this is just some stuff from this book. Like I said, it's the Golden th uh, Cord. You're going to find one called the Golden Thread. Good luck finding a cheap one. All best wishes to you. Uh, I actually have to go. Happy Shabbat and have a great day.